Hello, everybody. It's me again, Jake from Break the Mold Studios, and here I am today I'm going to show you a short little video on how to support your models for 3D printing. I'm excited about this one because I don't think a lot of people really talk about the best ways to support, especially in the hobby. Um, I've gotten a lot of my information on how to do this um, from sources outside of the hobby, um, and I feel like people in the hobby just kind of take what everybody else in the hobby does and, and redo it. And, and I think there are better ways to support your model for 3D printing than the ways a lot of people in the hobby do it. Um, so I'm going to show you how I go about this process um, for my personal prints. And uh, I hope you guys get something useful out of this. Uh, so to start off, I am using a program called Chitubox. Um, it is a free download. Um, and it works for most resin printers. Um, your printer, uh, you'll have to look up information about before you choose what sort of program you're going to be supporting in because um, some uh, programs are not supported on some uh, different kinds of printers, but Chitubox works for most of them and it's free, so that's what I prefer to use. Um, I also like some of the features they have. It's pretty user-friendly. Um, so, so that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, today we are going to be supporting uh, Moule Ember, um, which is a, a sculpt by the talented Natalie Wildrich of uh, Northwest Studios. Um, I'm printing these sculpts for them for um, a, uh, a live show that's going to be happening in Australia in January. Um, so I'm going to be printing those and, and shipping them over there as show prizes. Uh, I already have supported this sculpture before, but I accidentally made it slightly too large the last time I printed it. They're supposed to be micros and it, it came out a little bit large, more like small stable mate scale. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-support the whole file and show you guys how I go about doing that. So we're going to end up with a product that looks something like this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. So um, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have this little square here. Um, that is showing the dimensions of my build plate um, and that is going to vary per printer. Different printers have a larger bed size, different printers have a larger z-axis range and uh, just different volume in general. So the way that you set this up to be accurate for your printer is you go over here into settings and you go to machine um, and you can pick which machine you want. Um, you go over here and add a new printer um, and you can go down and scroll through anything they have, um, click through here. They have most different types of resin printers um, and it will, will show you the correct build plate size for those printers. You can also add your dimensions by hand um, here. You can do the sizes and everything. Um, and once you've added a printer, you can just click on here and your little print bed in the background will change. So we're gonna be supporting this for my Elegoo Saturn which I love. I love my printer. And first off, we are going to be importing the file. So click open file. I already have it picked up. So we're going to insert Moon Lambert. I'm, I'm not sure if I entirely saying that correctly, um, but here he is. And I'm just going to rotate him so that we can see him better. Computer's running a little slow today, not sure why, but we'll be okay. So what you have to consider when you're printing is that this is your entire print bed. So the size is going to vary depending on what size you want to print. If I printed him at this size that I have him right now, um, that was going to be, uh, this will be very large stable mate scale or small curio um, if I do it at this size. So I'm just going to shrink him down a little bit. Um, you can go over here to, these are your little tools to adjust where you're moving the horse. Um, I'm just going to make him a little smaller. Uh, always have, you know, these on the, the scale to fit or lock ratio because you don't want to change just the Z axis and not the X and the Y or else you're gonna stretch your horse. 
So we're just gonna make them tiny like this. Um, and it's important to get them the right size that you want them to be before you support them because if you change the size after you've supported them, it deletes the supports. Um, so what you want to consider when you're working on this is that this uh, rectangle represents your print bed and when you're printing your print beds actually going to be upside down like this so your horse is going to be hanging down um, and that creates a, a few different issues um, so the first layer that prints is the layer that touches this print bed so the first thing that we'll print is his little hooves um, when you're printing with a resin printer um, what happens is that the uh, the bed lowers down um, it touches the bottom of your tank of resin and a layer of light will, uh, a layer of UV light will be um, shown onto that and cure that little tiny layer and then it will pull back up and uh, it will uh, do the next layer over and over and over again. So you start at the bottom of the horse and then build up to the top. And uh, I'll show you just a little bit of how that slices. I can use this over here to show you. So this would be the first layer of the horse if I were building them just on the print bed would be like this. So you have to think about that when you're working on these horses um, because I'll show you like this. This is why we support. It's because if uh, you see these layers where, where the bottom part of the muzzle is, they do not attach. Um, to the main body of the horse because of the way that the head is shaped. Um, and what will happen if you don't support that area is that this little bit will be cured on the print bed and then when it pulls back up, that'll just fall. It'll just fall into the bottom of your tank and your horse will be missing every layer until they start to touch again with the main body of the horse that's already been supported. So anything below that layer there would just fall into the tank and not exist so you'd be you'd get a horse with half a head um and you obviously don't <laughs> want that um the way i see a lot of people in the hobby try to deal with that problem is by uh taking their horses and flipping them just upside down completely and then supporting them from the back so they don't have to support each individual leg I do not like that process um, because where you put your supports is the spot you want to see the least of. You don't want to see the little areas where your supports touch the horse, um, where they're going to be popped off because they can cause little bumps and, and blemishes. Um, and if you have to support the horse, you want to do it on the underside or an area where you're not really going to see the damage that's done by removing the supports. Um, another thing to consider is how the layers sit. Uh, when you're 3D printing, you are going to get some layer lines. That's inevitable. Um, but there are things that you can do to make those layer lines not as uh, obstructive to your horse. So right now, it, it's got a little bit of a tilt right now. But right now, as you can see, as I'm pulling this down, that's where the layer lines are running. The layer lines are running horizontal across the horse. So when you get to like the top of the back or something um, where these areas are converging, you're going to get a lot of those little bitty layer lines on the top of the horse here because um, those little lines are going to be so close together and the layers are so thin that's where you get your little circular layer lines and stuff. And we want to lessen those as much as possible. We want to put them in areas that are not going to be obstructive. We also want to have to support as little as possible. Um, so you see these little areas of the mane and stuff. If, if I were leaving it at this angle, you know, you'd have to support all of those individually, have to support the bottoms of the mane here all individually. And we'll still probably have to do that, but the way that I go about it helps lessen that a little bit. Another thing you want to consider is that since the printer 
um, prints one layer at a time and it takes the same amount of time no matter how thick the layer is the taller that your horse is standing the longer that the print time is going to be and you don't want to rush it by like putting the horse like completely on its side or something I mean you would get a lot less be a lot shorter print time if I lay the horse down like this but then all of the support bumps would be on his off side and, and it just wouldn't look very nice. So what I do to kind of lessen those print lines and make my print time shorter is that I adjust the angle of the horse a little bit. Um, sorry, this, <laughs> this little draggy bar is really stupidly complicated it, it doesn't necessarily go in the direction you're dragging it or the opposite direction it just kind of goes by how fast you're dragging it so it's really frustrating at first um, but it's it's kind of easy to overcome um, I'll show you how I angle the horse before I start supporting it uh, but the other thing that you have to consider is suction um, when the print bed is going up and down um, it is moving uh, the vat of resin with it a little bit, kind of like how you, when you splash your hand on the top of a pool, the water kind of, you know, follows your hand and moves. That can cause layer distortion on your print if you're not careful. So right now, if I had him just standing on all fours, when the printer had printed his whole legs, and then started to print his belly. Once it got to the layer where the belly was um, completely put in there, um, and it was just this thin little layer, when it pulled up, what can happen is that that thin belly layer can um, distort a little bit um, and, and create a weird print line there. So what we're going to do is going to help combat all of those issues that you might come across. So I'm going to take my little angle thing again that frustrates me. And what I do is first I'm going to tilt him a little bit this way. This helps, um, first of all, lessen suction because everything's not going to be printing on the same layer. See all the feet now are going to be printing at separate times. So it'll start down there, then go up here. So once it gets to the belly, you can see that it's going to print that part first and that part first. And then once it's fully printed there, see that's a nice thick layer there, or a, a nice thick chunk of resin that's going to be there that's not going to shift all weird um, once you get to that portion. Um, another thing that tipping them forward helps with is to lessen the time that it takes to print because your horse has gotten a little shorter since you've tipped it like this um, the the ears have gone down and it's not going to take as long um, this also helps with those weird print lines that I was showing you that might show up on the back of the hip so if I drag down like this you can see that there are not as many of those tiny layers it's going to be bigger chunks that are being printed at once so you don't get as many of those you'll, you'll still get a little bit of the round little layer lines on the top here but that's easy to sand and it'll be less of an issue so i've tipped him forward what i'm also going to do is tip him back a little bit not that way this way all right, that also lessens the print time a little bit. It also lessens suction. It also helps with those little bitty print lines that are gonna be on the top. Um, but the other thing that it does is it allows me to support these areas that are hanging down right here that would be printed you know, kind of separately um, easier as well as lessen how many supports I need to add on this side of the horse. Um, you saw before the bottoms of the mane were floating free, but now they are attached to the horse before, um, before they print themselves, so we don't have that huge overhang that you have to support. So, those are the basics that you need to know. Now we're going to go into the actual supporting. So we're going to click on this little icon over here and go into support mode. And it's not going to give me a platform, is it? Well, that makes me angry. Raft. 
Sorry. It's just making me mad here. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, it's not going to give me a platform this time for some reason. Sometimes it's finicky like that. Um, sometimes there is a platform that shows up at the bottom of the horse, um, and it basically just traces um, what you see as the shadow of the horse right there, and it helps hold it onto the build plate. That's not necessary, um, but generally it, it auto fills in there, and I'm not sure why it's not right now, um, but I've printed many horses without that, and it should be fine. Um, so how I like to start this is by using the heaviest supports that I'm going to be using first. So we have light supports, medium supports, and heavy supports over here. And as you can see, the little icons are kind of weird because I have them adjusted differently. Um, when you're working on a horse that's going to be, you know, this size, this is going to be a micro. I'm actually, I, I have this pre-supported for myself, so this is actually a little larger than a micro. Um, because I'm, I'm not going to save this file after this video. But uh, you, you want to consider size when you're working on this, and you want to start with your heaviest supports that you're going to use. My heavy supports here are weird and different um, because I've, I've messed with the um, settings. So my heavy supports are, are actually going to be the medium right now, and you can make any of them as large or as small as you want. Um, so... You have these different options over here. You have add support, delete support, edit support, and then you have the thickness of all of these supports. Um, so we'll just place one to show you. Um, so this is the underside of the horse. I'll find a spot where I want to put a, I will just stick it there. Oh, there. So this is my heaviest support right now. I'm going to hit edit support and drag this down so you can see. So this is the tube that holds this up. That's going to be printed um, at the bottom there. And then this is the part that attaches to the horse. As you can see, my connection points are quite small. Even though my pillar is thick, um, this is thick. The part that actually connects to the horse is small. And I do that on purpose so that I can pop these supports off with my hands um, before they are cured and not really have to worry about um, getting those big divots in the print that you don't want. Um, you can edit these, um, just hit edit support. If you were like, ah, that post's too big, you can go to middle, go to diameter, and lessen that, unless it's going to be a butt face. Okay. Add support, lessen these, doop. All right, so now it's a little bit thinner than it was before. Um, I'm actually going to make those thinner, uh, because I, I was supporting a larger size horse. Uh, the, the width of your largest, um, supports are going to be affected by, um, how large your print is, how heavy your print is going to be. This horse is not going to be particularly heavy, so it's not going to be particularly difficult for the supports to hang on to the horse. Um, so I don't need them to be quite as thick as I would for a stable mate or for a, a little bit or something larger. Um, so now you can um, notice these little points under here where you uh, get the, the red. The red is showing you what areas are facing down towards the print bed. And these little white marks are areas that they suggest that you put supports. Um, when you are looking at the underside of the horse, um, you will also be able to see these little black lines, and those represent the layers. So when you're going like this, um, what that black lasso is showing you is a single layer of the horse um, and where it would cut across when you're, you're doing the, the layered printing. Um, so you can just hold your little thing and go down, and wherever these little points kind of converge on a spot that sticks out like this, that is going to be a base layer spot that is not going to be supported by any other part of the body of the horse, and so that needs a support. So I will add a support here. As you can see, that goes down towards the bottom of the foot. I can edit this, pull that down a little bit so it doesn't completely touch the horse. You can see that. I'm actually not going to add that heavy support there. 
I'm going to add it in a different spot. But um, you can see what I'm talking about, kind of areas where you would need them. Um, you don't want anything to be free floating. It's very important to check for that. And it's very important to go with a, sorry, my phone chimed, to go with a little process while you're doing this. Um, what I like to do is I like to start with the bottom of the feet. I put my supports in there. I don't know why it keeps changing the diameter of the size. I wanted this to be 90. Please stop being a dick to me. There we go. Okay, that's better. So we're going to start with the areas that need to be supported the most, the areas that need to be held down the most, which would be the bottom of the hooves, the bottom of the tail, the bottom of the head, and the bottom of the belly. So if we're looking with our little black lasso tool, put one there, could put one there. That needs a support, but um, it doesn't all have to be areas where the black lasso converges that you put supports. Those are areas where it needs supports, but it's not necessarily the only places you can put them. Um, because besides being supported uh, just to make sure that nothing floats free in your vat, um, you also need to be supporting for weight. Um, so it's very important that you hold the horse down and still on the build plate. So you want to be thinking about that when you're going through here. That's why I stuck one on the belly. That'll help hold the horse down. Um, I'll put one right there. Since these are your heaviest supports, you don't want to group them together too much. You just want to find areas where you know that you're going to be needing to hold down the weight of the horse. Put one. No, I don't need one there. Put one here. And uh, here. Nope. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. So these are our, our heaviest base supports. These are the ones that support the lowest areas and the ones that are going to be helping uh, hold down the weight of the animal. So I'm gonna hit edit support. There are a couple different ways you can edit your supports. Um, you can move them around to get to better areas. You can move this. Um, and you can move these little connectors that help distribute weight. So what I'm going to do on all of these is just drag them down a little bit so that it's just the thin tip that's touching the actual horse. Those are being mean to me. Now if you find that one is doing this problem where when you go to edit support it just wants to make a mess of things, um, I'm going to actually go in here and delete these. This is a process that you have to fiddle with every time to make sure that you're getting it correct. Um, I am not an expert here. I just do do this uh, pretty often so I, I know what I want uh, out of the process. Uh, don't be like this. All right, we're going to put a light one there just so I can show you that it doesn't always have to do that. All right, there's our light support. And if you're finding an area where the heavy support is just not fitting in right, you can just add more light supports instead. Um, that also works. Uh, it's just good to have some heavy supports on there to make sure that your horse doesn't just float away. So these are the base areas that need to be supported. This is the most important part. Um, and now you wanna get into the real nitty gritty of um, the, the little floating areas, the islands. Um, so I have it set to my light supports. Um, I can make these much lighter than they are, um, but uh, this is how I have them set for now. Um, upper diameter uh, is the part here that's going to be touching the horse. Lower diameter when you have it set on top is going to be this area. For the middle, um, the diameter is this here and, and nothing else really matters. So 
we're going to flip him upside down again and see those areas where those little white tags are. This is going to need a support. I'll add that there. This is going to need a support. Not everywhere that has the little white tag necessarily needs a support, but most of them do. Um, which you can you can see if you uh, are paying attention. Um, so see, I had an issue there where I was trying to uh, support his other testicle and I couldn't get it in there because when you click there, it just wants to support it to his leg and that's just gonna be messy. Um, so there is another way you can go about doing that. If you have a spot that you need to support and clicking on the actual spot won't work, what you can do is click somewhere like here and uh, see you've got a little support right here now that's free floating um, so you can touch this little part take it drag touch that spot you need to support and now it's supported and you didn't have that weird thing that clipped into the leg anymore um, another thing that you want to watch when you're doing this is how close these supports are getting to body parts of the horse. Uh, so for example, right here, these are getting really close to the hoof. Sometimes what can happen when you're printing is that these two can merge together and create a really ugly lump. So what you can do to combat that, once again, is to select Edit Support. Just pull this out, pull that out from the hoof and then lower these so they're not touching the belly or, or coming into contact with anything. So see there, now you can see it's supported, but it is also, um, also not going to be merging into the leg of the horse, which is important. Okay. We're going to keep going. I always add more supports around the edge of the hoof, even though technically all of these layers would be fine. It's always a good idea to add more to hold down the sculpt and make sure that things um, don't fly away. Now see, this little white tag is an area where that's not a layer island that's going to float away, but it is an area where they recommend putting a support on this leg because um, it's important to bear the weight evenly. So we're just going to put one over here. It doesn't have to be on that spot that they suggested, but it is going to help hold the horse down. Mm -hmm. All right, under the jaw here, definitely need one there. Might need one on the edge of the lip there. need one there look part of this is just going to be me boringly talking about you know where I need to stick my supports um, so now you can see that there's this big cluster of supports right underneath his head and really you don't want that because what can happen is when you're printing little bits of resin, um, just little li little bits of the liquidy resin can get caught up in here in the big kind of conglomerate of these and it can make the bottom part of your head um, look kind of mushy and soft and you don't want that. So what you can do here is go ahead and edit your supports again. I like to drag these ones down from the face um, to avoid that happening. Um, and then I'm actually gonna merge a couple of these. And what I do is I take this and I'll just push them together until they're kind of one little happy support there. Um, and I do that specifically to save on resin first off, because the, the more of these you put, the more resin you're using up. Um, but also again, to um, keep that cluster issue from happening. You can also use it to strengthen things. Um, like I wanted a, a finer tip to this, but if, if the body part of one of these supports was too thin, I can put it inside a larger support and it'll support it all the way up. I don't know if that makes any sense to any of you, but I hope it does. All right, 
So I have that little part underneath the head figured out. That's going to look good. I'm just going to move that. So we're going to flip him upside down again. Once again, those areas where it suggests, but it's not necessarily needed. And then we're going to go to the tail. Um, and the tail is always an interesting thing to support, especially if you do a little wispy marks. I recommend doing more uh, chunky uh, manes and tails when you're working on 3D printing because the printing of those little wispy bits is always an issue. Um, like I said, again, here we're getting that kind of clumping issue. So I'm going to drag these down. Um, these kind of ones where it has two branches are interesting because it really only lets you move one at a time. And sometimes it, it gets kind of pissy about it. Support. And uh, honestly, you can drag these out as much as you want. It's not going to let me move this one because I already moved these things and it doesn't like that. Um, but you can drag it heck out here and it would still support that. I'm not sure why you would want to. Um, but you can do that to get uh, out of the way of all these nice little um, dangly bits. I'm going to delete that one because I don't like that support. All right, so we're going to re-support that. I use my uh, process that I showed you earlier. Just place that somewhere else. That way I don't get that little double twinge one that I don't like. So we're gonna drag that over here. And then we can delete this sport because it's not touching anything anymore. And look, now we have those little tendrils supported and there's no big clumpiness underneath it. It's not going to cause a big thing of resin to build up. Um, and that is exactly what you want. So we're going to flip upside down again and look and see what else needs to be supported here. Needs to be one there. But all of these are going to have to be drag and drop ones, I believe. There we go. And you don't need to put, I see a bunch of people put supports haphazard like all over the horse. If you are really thinking about the weight distribution and you are supporting all the areas that need to be supported, um, you really don't have to just cover the whole dang thing in resin or in <laughs> in supports. Um, the fewer supports, the fewer contact points to your horse, the better. Um, the least amount that you can get away with is uh, the best amount. And I see that's going to be difficult to do. And I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing that, supporting that little spot. So I'm going to. Add a support over here, edit that support, come up, drag to the spot that I need it to be, go up here, just make sure that it's touching that spot that needs to be supported. And then I'm going to move this and pull this all the way up so it comes out kind of straight. You want to make sure that it's still below the layer that's going to be right here because you don't want it to print as an island but I can put this all the way out here um, and it won't touch the rest of the tail that way. And I can be confident that I'm uh, printing that without getting any layer lines accidentally turned into part of the horse. Or any supports turned into part of the horse. Dewey. Actually, I'm going to put it on the back side because I think that's better. Um, Every single horse that you support is going to be a crapshoot. It's, uh, it's, you gotta figure out the best way to do it. I usually do two whole test prints of different support types before I find the one for this specific sculpture that works the best. Oh, excuse me. 
Um, and it's, it's important to play with, you know, some trial and error to make sure that you like what's coming out of your printer. Um, quality control is very important. Don't just always go with the first result and be like, okay, well that's, you know, how it has to be. Don't settle for a print that looks okay, you know? Um, in this industry, it's the customer satisfaction that is the most important in a lot of industries it is of course um, but uh, I can't sell a, a thing if my customers aren't confident in the quality of my work and I want to be known for quality not quantity um, so that's really really what I focus on um, putting these supports together excuse me <laughs> putting these supports together like this is called tree supporting and i am a big fan of that helps lessen the resin helps lessen the clumping of the resin um and uh so i do it quite a lot uh some people don't do that at all i think it's useful but that's my personal opinion so we're just gonna drag these out here a little ways just so they're not all directly up underneath the tail um, these bits here just help distribute the weight between the supports. Um, you don't necessarily have to have as many of these as are being auto-generated. So you can delete a couple of them. Um, sometimes they just get messy. Uh, but they can be helpful when you're trying to uh, make sure that you're distributing the weight properly. I see here, here's a floating one. You can delete that because that's already touching that and being supported. So now we're going to go up under here and look under the underside of the main. Um, I don't know what under here is going to... This is going to need to be supported. That's going to need to be supported. That's all fine. That's going to need to be supported and that's going to need to be supported. Um, and when I am going about doing these little main bits, if you just click on this, let me just show you real quick. You just click on that. It's either not going to pop one up or it's going to make one of those weird things that just merges into the side of the horse. Um, so we're again going to do the drag and edit technique. Put a little support there. Drag to the tip of the main. Drag that up. And I can pull it out here. As long as this is below the uh, the tip of the mane, we are golden. Just want to make sure I keep it away from the body of the horse. Add another support. Pull it up here. Make sure it touches the spot I need. And these tiny little tendrils on micros and stuff, they're not all going to show up anyway. So if it kind of obscures the tip of your mane, that's okay. This itself is going to be quite thin. Um, we're getting real up close and personal uh, with the sculpt itself, but you've got to remember this is going to be in micro size. So when it's done, it's going to be like, like that. So you can see how thin all these little bits are actually going to be. They're just going to pop off with your hand uh, when you go to remove it from the supports, or it should, uh, as long as you are being careful and using the right technique to do so. Once again, just want to make sure it's not going to merge into the side of the main. Just want to keep that below. And I'm going to put these side by side, but not merge them completely. Just kind of go like this. Um, that makes it a little bit thicker, makes it a little bit more likely that those aren't just going to float away. They're going to hold each other up. Put another one right here. Drag, drag, drag to the bottom of the main bit. You can only drag this around when you're in add support mode. I don't know why, it really irritates me, but that's why I keep switching back and forth in case you were curious. So I'm actually gonna connect it to that one and it's gonna support both of those little main bits right there. Um, get this selected. Just pull that up and it'll probably break off a tiny little bit of the end of those main bits uh, but since this is a micro those tiny little spots would basically disintegrate anyway um, so you are gonna see that tip of the main and it's not gonna be all wonky it's, it's not gonna look any different nobody will ever notice the difference um, 
but that's another thing you have to think about when you're um, sculpting for smaller sizes is that the amount of detail you put in it is not necessarily all going to show up when you're finished depending on the scale. All right. Edit support. Doodly do. Pull that up. Make sure it's not touching anything bad. Put it right in there. So now we've got this nice little cluster of supports over here. It's not going to be attaching to any part of the horse. It's not going to create any clumping. And we have all those nice little spots supported. All right. So we're going to come over to this side of the head. If I remember correctly, there's one little spot here that might need to be supported. I think I've actually got it in an angle where I don't need to support these main bits. All right, so now what we're going to be doing, since we have this all put together, you can look it over, go, uh, do I need to adjust any of these? Do I need to add anything? I'm actually going to add a support onto the heel tip here of the horse, and over here, over here, just more things to help hold the weight up. I like to do at least two supports. Uh, per hoof, I think that's a good policy. Sometimes I like to add more than that if I really think that there's going to be a lot of weight distributed there. Okay. What was that one about? Was that an accident? I think that one might have been an accident, but I will add another support in here just to just to distribute the weight a little bit. And I remember that I had an issue with the layer line skipping right there on the hip last time I printed this horse. So we're going to put one right there. So now that I have all of these put down, I think that they're where I want them to be. Everything looks okay. Um, you really don't need many more supports than this. I know people just kind of like pepper the whole thing with supports, um, but just adding superfluous supports with no real purpose is not really productive. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. If I wanted to add another one, I might add another one in here just to see that I got that whole weight supported. Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna look down on the horse. I'm gonna take this little slider right here and I'm gonna go down through all the layers and just kind of look at where things are. Um, as you can see, the inside part of the mesh is that black color and the outside is the blue. So you can see where the little islands start to separate. Um, see the space in between here and the tips of the manes where we supported. Um, so you can see that when the main tip ends where there's an island, the support takes up the spot. And that's what you want. When you're going down, you want all of these little islands to end in supports. And if you are clicking through here and looking at anything and you notice that any islands pop up that don't then end in supports, it's important to go through layer by layer and add supports to all those spots. Now pay attention on the belly here. Sorry if you just hear the clacking of my keyboard, I'm just using the arrow keys here. As you can see, as everything kind of pulls away, all my little islands are ending in supports. There we go. Everything looks good. Um, 
And there are more in-depth ways you can check to make sure that you've supported everything so you don't have any support errors when you print. There's some software that you can use to automatically identify uh, islands, um, and I like using that. But for now, um, since this is a short video, uh, I just wanted to show you this process. Normally I go through and check a few more times, um, but that is what the process of supporting your piece for printing looks like. And this is about what your end result should look like before you go to print. Um, I may do some more in-depth videos about you know how to print, things like that, how to actually slice this. It's real easy just to, to slice and save as a file um but for today this is what i'm going to show you guys um i hope that this was helpful and informative to you and i hope you come back for more videos thank you so much for being a patron you guys support me so much um in my creative endeavors and i really appreciate everything you have to offer um and if you followed along with this support please tag me in whatever you're printing i'm so excited to see what you get to do um, you guys have a great rest of your day and goodbye.